Hey guys, my name is Lori. I'm an Apartment Life Community Coordinator in Greensboro, North Carolina. This month I've partnered with Kristen and Dylan, the Community Coordinators for Meridian at Sutton Square in Raleigh, North Carolina to bring you guys a really fun video tutorial. Today we'll be painting a Portuguese Man of War jellyfish, which is a really, really cool creature with a lot of fun components to it. This tutorial is part of a virtual event for the residents at Meridian at Sutton Square, but if you're not a resident and you still found us, we're glad you're here. We'll list out the supplies in just a minute so you can paint from home too. Residents who RSVP'd in time received all the supplies that they need to complete this project. So you're all set to go. Out supplies. For this project, we're using four colors. Magnesium blue hue, Carbazole violet, lemon yellow, and Mars black. Now, if you're painting along at home with your own supplies, you might not have magnesium blue hue and carbazole violet. They don't typically come in sets for watercolors and they might be a little tricky to find in art supply stores. That's okay, use what you have. Any cool tone blue and purple will work just fine. Cool tone means it has more of a blue shade than a red shade. It doesn't seem quite as warm and sunny. It seems kind of cool and relaxed. That's what we're going for. We're also gonna need a round tip paintbrush, a palette for mixing colors, and two sheets of watercolor paper, one for scratch paper and one for your project. Now it's really important that you get paper that is specifically for watercolors. Um, watercolor paper is made a lot thicker than normal paper. It's made to carry the weight of the water and the pigments together. If you take watercolors on anything made not for watercolor, it's not gonna be able to handle the water. The pigments are gonna sit on top, the water's not gonna soak in, and your paper's just gonna tear to shreds, and nobody wants that. So watercolor paper is the way to go. You're also going to need a glass of water, a paper towel or a hand towel, a pencil, and a white gel pen, but that one's completely optional. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I know this might be a little bit intimidating if you've never really done watercolors before, but I don't want you to worry. We're gonna break this down into some easy steps that you'll be able to follow along as you need to. Feel free to pause the video to play around with techniques that we go over and we'll make it work. Our first step is to draw the outline and sketch out just the top part of our jellyfish. The rest will be freehand so you can kind of go wild and do what you want with it. The next step is we're going to color in the bell of the jellyfish and the crest. Then we're going to come down here and do these little arm plumes and then the larger arms and then finally these last little tentacles. At the very end we'll come over and do a second wash on the body and up at the top to create these ridges. And then if you want, you can add splatters and I'll teach you how to do that. Let's get started. Let's go over some of the basics of watercolor. Watercolor is a really fun medium because it allows so much freedom and so much variation in what you do. It's just learning how to control the water to make the pigment do what you want. Um, if you have the palettes, go ahead and take a drop of water on your brush and dab it on to the dry paint. I've gotten mine straight out of the tube, so I don't have to. But what that water drop does, if you leave it for a few minutes, it will activate the paint, get it wet, get it kind of soggy and ready to roll. With watercolors, this may look like a teeny tiny amount of paint, but I promise you don't need much. See this little drop right here is my black. Just a little bit of that goes such a long way. I barely use it. Um, Tube paints go so far in hand paints and watercolor because you don't need a lot of it. It's got so much pigment condensed into one little place, you just add water to make that happen. One of the basic ideas behind watercolor is that to get darker colors, you need more pigment on your paint than you do water. So if you get your brush wet, wipe it off a little bit on the sides or dab it on your paper towel, Dive in, cover your brush. I've put a lot of pigment on my brush and I've taken a good chunk of the water out. So when I put that down, see this is my purple, but it almost looks black because this is such a highly pigmented paint. If I want to get that to a lighter purple so I can tell it's more purpley than black, like my little black over here, I am going to dip my brush in the water, wipe just a little bit. 
can see that has lightened up significantly. For the jellyfish, we want it to look kind of translucent, which means we're going to need our colors super duper light. So we're going to dip again, wipe just a smidge of the water, excess water off, and we're going to keep going. Right about here, this light part, that's about the shades that we're going to want to go for our jellyfish, um, at least on the top crust. See up here we have a lighter purple. Down here is that really dark, rich, pigmented. So if you want to play around with this, pause the video. Get used to adding lots of water. One of the things you can do on your palette is to just physically add more water to the paint. See, if I pull out of this part where I've added more water pretty regularly, it comes out lighter each time than if I pull it out and then rinse it a lot. It's a lot easier just to add water to my palette and go from and pull from that little area. One of the other things we need to learn about is how to hold your brush. And most of you just, you just hold it like a pencil. That's fine. But how your um, how your brush comes into contact with the paper affects the type of stroke that it makes. So continuing with my purple here, if I just draw like I have on a pencil, I'll see if I can hold this like that. It's going to make a regular line. The more contact my bristles have, and this is just pressing down very lightly, the thicker my line is going to be. If I hold my pencil more vertically like this, with just the tip and with light, 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 light pressure. See, that's a lot thinner of a line. When we go in to do this jellyfish tentacle and arm stuff, we're going to be using kind of a mixture of different types of pressure. So to get that kind of wavy thing, we're gonna use the tip, kind of squiggle around, come around, squiggle on it again. It'll be fine. Before you actually put pencil to paper, we need to talk about how you're going to place your jellyfish on the page. Think about how you want your jellyfish arms to look. You can have him, let's say that's our jellyfish bell and he's got a crest. You could have him kind of going this way so his tentacles will come off and his arms will come off more to that side. You could have him kind of sitting there straight with his arms doing whatever they do going straight down or you can have him off to the other side and have his arms kind of swooping this way. Now I want you to notice something on the page I did my first draft. This is the first one I painted of this. Um, I put the body kind of off to the left in the center and I made my legs go this way. I ran out of space and by the time I got to the end of it I realized well there's this huge blank space in the, over here and it doesn't have very good composition so to fill up that space I added some water droplets of paint and blobs and it, it came out looking okay but this one I'm gonna plan ahead a little bit better and instead of putting him over here and having arms go here I'm gonna keep my that way direction I think that's kind of cool I'm gonna move and put my body over here so I don't run out of space. So when we sketch our jellyfish, we're going to go about two thirds of the way up the page and draw just a straight line across. And that's going to be our stand in water line. You know, we're looking as it, at this jellyfish as if it's kind of floating on the water because that's what Portuguese man of wars do sometimes. They'll float with their bell on the water up and the tentacles just kind of floating and chilling below. So this is our water line. Um, now when you're drawing and sketching, I want you to be very careful with the pressure that you're putting down on the paper. Um, this is going to be a lighter lead to begin with, but if I press down hard and it's really, really dark, that's going to be able to be seen through even some pretty dark shade watercolor. Watercolor in itself is a transparent for the most part. There are some sets that aren't. But the stuff you're using is transparent. That means even if it's dark, you can still see through it. When you get really light, and we're going to need to get really light, 
You're really going to be able to see through it. But if you use a gentle touch to create light lines, and we come in with a really light, watery color, see that's just going to kind of blend in to the pigment that we have and not show up nearly as much. So, again, I've decided that I'm gonna have my, the body of my jellyfish over here with the tentacles flowing this way. So I wanna do that. We're just gonna do kind of a lumpy, semicircle sort of curving in on the edge just a little bit to kind of help us create that shape. Now, if you've done a shape that you don't like, or if it doesn't feel like what you want to paint is the way you want it to go, take an eraser, and when you erase, don't scrub away at it. That's going to break down the top layers of the paper and damage it. So when you paint over it, it's not going to hold water or pigment as well as it needs to, and it's just going to look kind of messy. So um, the best thing is a kneadable eraser. Um, you can buy these at most art supply stores for a couple bucks. You can kind of mold it and gum it into any shape you want. You press down and lift up. I know most of you might not have those in your homes, so just find the softest eraser you can have, bendy, gentle, and I'm going to change the shape of this. So I'm just going to gently, with teeny tiny little light strokes, so I don't damage the paper, erase that. And come in and change what I've done. There we go. I'm much happier with that. Next we're going to add the crest. The crest will come up a little bit at the side and then kind of have a wave swoopy thing in between. So up a little bit and maybe down about there. There we go. That's all we're going to sketch. Everything else is going to be freehand. Now that we've finished our sketch, it's time to start laying down some color. Now the first wash we're going to do, and wash is layer, watercolor term, is going to be very light. Now it's going to be real hard to get that same level of lightness that you need for the, for the layer by adding pigment to your brush rinsing it off a billion times, putting some down, and doing the whole process over. So we're going to use our brush to get drops of water and add it over here to our blue. So we just have a pool ready to pull from for the color intensity that we want. So get out your scrap sheet, do that, and test it. See, that's a nice light, but I want to go a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add another drop, swirl it around, Maybe just a little bit lighter. Yeah, that'll do. Got my color that I want to pull from at the intensity that I want it at. So now I'm going to rinse off my brush, wipe it on the side a little bit, and we are going to lay down just an initial layer of water just on the bell. Um, this can be tricky. We don't want to add so much water that when you tilt the page this way, it just drips. But we want to, don't want it to be so dry either that the color doesn't blend. So get your brush and use, the, use it to paint in the line with the water. Just a nice, thin layer of water. And if at any point the water dries out, on the page before you can get some color on it, you can go back and re-wet it. That's no problem. If you feel like you put too much water on your, on your paper and you want there to be less, you can either A, wait for it to dry, or you can rinse your brush, wipe off the excess on the, cut, on the side of the cup, dab it on your paper towel and come in and lift it up. Dab it and lift. It is up to you. All right, so we've got our layer of water and we're gonna get some of our watery blue and come in and add that to it. This technique is called wet on wet. That means we're adding wet watercolor to wet paper. And it creates a very soft, 
even spread of pigment. Um, so we filled this up with color, but we want it to have a bit of a shape. We want to show that this jellyfish isn't just a wonky shaped blob. It's got a roundness to it. And since it's floating on top of the water, the sun is coming from up above, this part up at the top is going to be the lightest. So if you clean off your brush, dab it on your towel, you can come in and scoop some of the pigment and bring it down along the bottom. And that creates just the idea that part of this jellyfish is lighter than the other, and that automatically creates a depth to it. Now we're going to go in and add another color onto this at the very bottom just for fun. So I'm going to get some blue and a little bit of yellow and a little more blue because I want it to be more teal than not. And literally half a drop of black because this stuff is powerful. Yeah, it's kind of a nice C. And I'm just going to touch it along the edge with the very tip of my brush. I want to smooth that out a little bit. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to wipe it off real good on the side of the cup. Dab it on my towel. And then I'm come in and just kind of smooth that line. We'll come back after we're done with the arms and tentacles of the jellyfish and do a second layer up here and add in a little bit more color to create a little bit more depth. But now it's time to move on to the crest for the first wash of the crest. Now the crest, we're going to do the same technique where we're going to fill it up with water and then add the pigment on top. But we want this upper part of the jellyfish to be dry first. If it's wet and your pigment's down the way you like it, all pretty and perfect, and then you add water up here just to meet it, water likes to meet up with other water. So the second they touch, the water from down here and the pigment with it, it would zoom up to the top. Now we're gonna do the same color on the top with that blue, but you might not like how it, you're gonna have to go back and just redistribute your pigment the way that you had it. So it's just easier to go ahead and give it a minute to dry. Mine is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm just going to paint water all along from the top of the crest to right where the body meets. Okay, remember, not sopping wet, not super dry. And we're gonna go in with our watery blue. And paint where we have it. Make a soft color layer, nice and even. All right, that looks pretty good. We're going to add a line of purple up at the top. So get your water, get some purple on it, make sure it's very, very light. If it's not light enough, dip your brush in the water, wipe it off, and try again. See, that works for me. So we're going to come along just on the upper edge, not these little going in towards the body parts, but just along the upper edge, just touch it. That purple is going to bloom out where the water meets the other pigment and it's going to do what it wants. Let it. It's got that beautiful color variation to it because we want to have that light purple. It's blending in naturally with the color that we have down. And I actually really like that. So we're going to let our crest dry. Um, check to see if your body is dry before you move on to the next step. If you touch it and it's still cold or if you can visibly see water, 
give it a couple of minutes, let it dry a bit. If you're really impatient, get a hair dryer <laughs> or a heat gun and make it dry. But this has to be dry before we go on to the next part because we're gonna be coming in here with a deep dark purple. And because water likes to go meet with water, if you touch right here, while all of this is still wet with the dark purple, those colors are gonna mix in a way that you're not gonna like. And it's not gonna give you the desired outcome. So for this, we're gonna start with a dark purple right up underneath the bottom. So if the sun is coming up from here, this is the light part, light's hitting the top of the body. Right underneath is where the shadow is gonna be. So get your brush wet, wipe off the excess water, and just really load it up with the purple pigment. And again, test sheet to see what works for you. I'm gonna go with this darker bit and we're gonna pull out uh, the color with some water in just a minute. I'm also going to tilt my paper because I am gonna go this way with my tentacles. And one thing I know about myself is that when I sketch, it's easier for me to come towards me than it is to go like this. I just have a little bit more control. So I'm gonna to play to my strength and roll with it. Right here, we're gonna use short little jaggedy movements. I'm using the tip of my brush and just these quick little chuk -chuk 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 movements. It's almost like a nice pretty scallop like the edge of some scalloped lace, but it's really small and angry. Just really angry little scallops. And there's not gonna be a set way to do it. We don't want everything to kind of be jagged and parallel. They're going to overlap just a little bit. Jellyfish are creatures that move. They have so much flow to it. And we're gonna kind of try to imitate that with these different strokes. If you're thinking about it too hard and trying to plan out every single little squiggle that you make, take a breath, breathe in, breathe out, and just do it. This is fun. You can let, really let loose and just mess around with it. We do wanna be careful that we're not gonna make it too, too heavy. Um, so we're going to start with one end and just make some jagged lines. We're not going to go too far down, maybe just a finger's width or so. But remember, even if you have one going kind of this way, bring it back the direction so we get the idea that all this movement is going in the direction of where the water is pulling all of the arms as a whole. Add some more pigment. And I'm gonna have some come a little bit further down. Now I'm going to swig my brush in the water. I'm gonna wipe the excess off on the side of my cup dab it on the towel, make sure it's where I want it to be, and we're going to pull some more squiggles down and around. Okay, some of these are lighter than the others. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. Oh yeah, there we go. And we'll come again over all of this and do a slightly darker layer on top after we've added the larger arms. But uh, for now, this will do well. We are gonna let the bottom bits of this dry a little bit before we come in and do these long arms. So again, if you need to, pause the video, refill your drink, switch out your water, uh, use the bathroom, wait for this bit to dry before we come in. Otherwise, the colors are all gonna mix together. All right, I think that's mostly dry. I'm gonna mix up some colors for my arms. So we're gonna get ready to do our arms. Because the arms are underneath, we're gonna make them darker than what's up here. So I'm gonna get some blue from my palette. Put that over there. Now, 
this blue, because it is so bright, when I have more pigment on my brush, it's going to turn out a bright blue instead of a dark blue. Um, there are a couple of things you can do to that. If you happen to have orange on you, add a little bit of orange to tone it down. Or if you're like me and you just have some black nearby or you don't want to grab your indigo, add in some black and some more blue until you find the shade that you want. See, I think we are just about there. That'll do. All right. We do want to be careful at how we balance these little plumes up here and the arms that come beneath. We don't want just like heavy, heavy arms. We want a couple of strong main things, some smaller, delicate ones, and we don't want it to just be an explosion. See, I did a, another practice one over here. I went heavy up here, I went heavy on top, I went heavy below, and it feels like it's just a lot. It's lost a lot of its light jellyfish qualities. So we're going to try to avoid that and start with just one arm. So I'm coming in, and these guys have kind of a jaggedy shape to them. They're not normal jellyfish arms that flow, they are tough jellyfish arms, angry squiggles. So I'm gonna lay down my first <laughs> initial angry squiggle. And then I'm gonna get more pigment on my brush and I'm gonna come to the side and I'm gonna do my little scallops on the edge. And as you get farther away from the body. Up here we're going to be big thick, thin out as you get farther along. And I'm going to add another one over here and this one I'm going to kind of bring behind. Now if your arm down here is too wet, maybe save that for another tool or two later and give it some time to dry. Mine dried pretty quickly. When you're composing the shape of your painting, it's easier to put the big parts in first, like the most important elements that's going to carry the weight of the painting, and then just add all the little details in later. So we're going to do our big arms. We're only going to do a few, and then we'll add in some smaller ones to give it a little bit of a balance. Coming along here with my scallops. And I want there to be a little bit of color variation in my larger arms. So I am going to add a little bit of purple to my dark blue mixture, just to make it more interesting. And this one sweep from over here and again there's no rhyme or reason for the directions that I'm going and up here I'm just doing little strokes to blend it in I'm gonna stop right here and again if this is wet don't let it cross wait before you touch the two come back thicken up this arm a little bit and because these are squiggles, we don't have to think too hard about them. Just kind of make it a goopy, goofy shape. You have the freedom to do that as an artist. One of the tricks that's always helped me when I'm drawing or painting is that we're not really painting what we're painting. We are painting the idea of what we're painting. So this isn't really a jellyfish. It's not going to be a perfectly realistic interpretation of jellyfish. We're painting the idea of a jellyfish. It's a, what's that painting called? The Treachery of the Pipe, where it's a picture of a pipe. And it says in the bottom in French, this is not a pipe. It's a picture 
of a pipe. It's a painting of a pipe, but it's not really a pipe. Art kind of messes with your head like that, and I love it. All right, so we've got our larger arms. We're going to come in and do some smaller squiggles. Now, the smaller squiggles are going to be a darker in value. So I've got my mixture that I've been using for these arms. I'm just going to add a hint of black. And remember, if you go too dark with this, you're going to have to add more of the blue or the purple or what have you to balance it out. But we want a dark color that's not straight up black. I want to add some blue to that. Oh yeah, I like that. It's like an indigo. We're going to come back in and do just little jaggedy bits. Like they're kind of coming out from behind. I'm going to have one down here that's going to come behind these guys. And maybe there's one down this way. And maybe there's one rogue one that wanted to try to go this way, but the current's so strong, he can't. And to add a little bit of length, because I feel like he's stopping short and I want him to be long and flowy, I'm going to start one down here. And it's just going to meet up. Remember, we're using the tip of our brush and just kind of zigzagging it around. And I'm going to add some purple and make one that crosses over a little bit. Make something like that little jaggedy or that's not a word. All right, there we go. We have some tentacles and some arms. They're all flowy. They create this idea of movement. I like it. So we're gonna come in with some dark purple. And I say dark purple, I mean highly pigmented purple. If you want to add just a smidge of black to your mixture, you can. And we're gonna come up and touch up up here. You might not have to, like over here is a lot darker than what's over here. so. I'm going to leave that alone, but where my purple has dried to more medium, just at the top, I'm going to do some dark purple squiggles. I'm not going to cover up all the white. I'm not going to come all the way down. I'm just going to just a smidge touch up to add some depth. See, it kind of creates this idea that there's layers of <laughs> all these squiggly things. Um, and. Sometimes I don't know when to quit, but I've decided that that's where I'm going to quit. Now it's time to come back up to the top, the body, and the crest, and do our last layer up here. Now, if you've gotten your body and you like the balance, you don't want to add more, you don't have to do this part. Um, if you, and that's okay. Just kind of wait and sit and watch. But I'm going to add just a little bit more of that green down here. Now, first, we're going to wait for our purple to dry. Did you know that so much of watercolor is just waiting for stuff to dry? How nuts is that? But the green on my palette has dried up, so I'm going to add some water to reactivate it, get it all going wet again, test it out, make sure it's kind of a cool shade. I've decided I want to add some more blue, so I'm going to add some more blue. I love test paper so much. And I'm going to come along the edge, the bottom of my jellyfish, with this deeper tealy blue gray, just along the edge, and curving up just a smidge. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off real well, wipe it off, dab it, and I'm with my dampish brush, I'm just going to blend it out a little bit.
Now, other things you could do is if you want to add a swoosh of the blue and bring kind of an, a bright blueness back up into the bell, you can. I'm going to just a little bit. See where this went off the edge just a smidge? I don't want that there, so with a clean brush with some water, I'm just gonna kind of scrub at it, dab my brush off, and lift it up. There are some pigments that you can't do that with. Those are called staining pigments because they stain your water, <laughs> go figure. But um, most of the time you can clean it up a little bit with just a bit of clean water. Now we're gonna move on to doing the crust. Now the crust, we are going to bring in a very, 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 very light purple. So even here, I feel like I went a little too dark on my practice go. So test sheet. We're gonna do what we did for the blue to get it nice and light. We're going to add just a bunch of water to your little palette and rinse some pigment in and test it and pull from there. So I still feel like that's a bit dark. So I'm gonna add a couple drops more. Yeah, nice and light, barely there. Now when we do our lines, we're going to follow the top line for the top of these bars and the bottom line for the bottom. So we're going to have an imaginary second line down here and that's how we're going to do our bars. Sometimes that means it'll be more at the top depending on the curve but what we don't want is this beautiful curve that you've made for your body and your crest and then just straight lines all the way across because this is not a jail cell this is a living organism it has movement and flow so we're going to recreate that with these bars that we make. So load your brush up with that really light pigment and we're going to start. And do keep in mind, these are going to dry lighter than they are. So don't beat yourself over the head with it. water because better to be safe than sorry. I can always darken them up later. Later. So I'm going to come along and kind of go parallel with the top and bring it down. And this looks a little wet, so I'm going to use my brush to pick up some pigment and bring it over here. And we have the same thing. I think that one I'm just going to pick it up from over there and move it over here. I'm just trying to create the idea that these things have little indents in it. That there's a, a flow, an interruption of just this plain goopy thing. I don't want to say it has ridges because I feel like if it's going to have ridges it needs to be rigid and jellyfish are definitely not rigid. But I don't know what the word for that would be. I guess I don't know too much about jellyfish. All right. Give this a minute to dry because we're going to come in over the top in just a minute with a layer of water just along the top outer edge and come in with just a little bit more purple. While I'm waiting for my crest to dry, uh, I want to deepen the color right here. This is just a personal preference. You do not have to follow along with this part, but I just want to touch up what I have here and blend these colors a little better. So don't mind me while I nitpick at myself.
Okay, the top of my jellyfish crust is dry, so we're going to do the last little bit of painting that we have to do on this guy before we get to the really fun parts. So, get some water on your brush. Not too much, not too little. Dab. And, of course, if you need to, check on your scratch paper. But just along the outer edge, we're going to do a swoop of water. And we're going to come in with a little bit of purple, not too dark. And just recreate what we did on the first layer. Just a little bit of purple up on the top. As I'm waiting for this top part to dry on the crest, I'm going to come in with my gel pen and add just a little bit of white squiggles here and there. This is going to add an illustrative element to it that I personally really like. If that's not your jam, if this isn't going to add a texture that you like, don't do it. No pressure. This is just something that I prefer. Okay, let's get started. So as you're drawing, sometimes, especially if your painting is a little bit damp, the tip of your gel pen is gonna might get gunked up. If that happens, come over and just squiggle it out and keep rolling. So I'm gonna come in and start on my body because I want it here to be communicated that it's lighter than what's going on. I'm just gonna add some squiggles. And it might not show up super well because it's already pretty light. That's okay. Now I'm gonna come down here to my bottom little plumes and again we're not going to go overboard that's really hard to do when you're doing art but restraint is good and I'm just going to add some squiggles this makes it look like it's not just a layer of dark on top of a layer of light things it's got a little bit of depth to both oh, maybe just a smidge over here and we can even come in and do this on the tentacles too. I'm just going to do it on these lighter ones because this darker one looks like it's kind of in the background and it's not going to catch as much. So just especially down here at the end, I'm just adding in little squiggles. There's no rhyme or reason to it really. All right. When you're satisfied with all of the little details on the bottom, we can come on up and just kind of add a little bit of white to these ridges up here at the top. Um, and remember, as you're going, if your pen tip gets junked up, just scratch it on the side. And see, um, if your bars here went a little too dark, this is a great way to add a little bit of lightness to it. So when you step back, you can't really tell that there's quite as dark. Up until now, our jellyfish hasn't taken up the entirety of our page. It's just taken up part of it. So we're going to fill in that empty space with these splatters because it's a lot easier than coloring in water or doing a background. And it just really adds that fun, splattery texture to it that clearly brings it into the realm of watercolor illustration. All right, we are going to get our brush, get a little bit damp, and then we're going to come in and just load it up with pigment. Get it really all over your brush. Now we're going to dip it in some water. And up until now, we have been wiping it off, but don't this time. We just want it dripping, literally dripping, with water and pigment together. Now take your brush, hold it firmly in one hand, use your finger and tap. Boom, splatter, isn't that cool? All right, we're gonna do it again. Load up with pigment, get some water, don't wipe, and tap again. And the third time, just kinda keep going. It's easy to go too much, but I'd encourage you to kind of step back and make some space. All right, I'm gonna load up with some blue so it's not just purple splatters. Get it all over my brush. Make sure it's nice and covered. Get some water. Do a splatter and boop. Eh, I got some on my jellyfish, but that's okay. It's fine. It looks kind of like bubbles, doesn't it? All right, let's call that done. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you had a really good time just playing around with watercolors, learning some new techniques, and making something truly beautiful and unique. Now that you've finished your painting, I'd love to see what you've created. Post it on Instagram and tag me at etaylor.creates or your community, which is at Meridian Sutton Square, or use the hashtag Meridian Sutton Paint Along. That way we can all see what you've created and you can see what all your other neighbors have done in creating their own unique take on this jellyfish. To find out more about Meridian at Sutton Square or Apartment Life programs, check the description below. Thanks again and I will see you guys next time.